It's Wednesday, February 1st here at the West End Gun Club. It's been a minute since I've been on the Rimfire Range, but we're out here today to do a run through of the February 2023 NRL 22 Courts of Fire. And if you've seen my last range vlog, you kind of understand what's been going on in the past several weeks for our NRL 22 matches here. We've had to cancel both the December 2022 NRL 22 match as well as the January 2023 NRL 22 match because of the rains. They pretty much washed out the roads. Uh, it flooded the creek one day uh, for the December match, and it was it's going to be unsafe for people to cross. And then January, it was technically, um, it wasn't raining anymore, but the creek was still fast and deep, and so you can't cross the creek to get to the range. And so when, that, when those road conditions happen here at the West End Gun Club, they will shut down the range for non-member use. And so matches are technically non-member use uh, events. So even though we're members, we can't hold the match. We have to cancel the match because we will not have guests available. We don't have RO staff for the main line checking people in uh, to get to where we're at. So it's kind of why we had to cancel the matches. Uh, hopefully we can have the match in February once they clear out the road or level regrade, kind of just clean it up. But uh, I was able to get through here. There's another guy, I guess, on the pistol base shooting. So it's not too bad, but obviously not good enough review. Anyway. I've already set up a couple stages, spent about an hour or so just kind of getting all my target tree kind of squared away because I haven't been in the container in about a month. So just kind of get stuff figured out, like where I have stuff at, because I totally forgot. But let's go ahead and warm up my gun and then we'll just step right into uh, shooting uh, some of the stages. If you can't already tell, it's very windy out here this morning. Uh, 15 mile an hour, uh, 20 gusts. Yesterday, it was about 40 to 60 miles an hour at the range, and uh, I was hoping it would die down, which it did compared to 40. 15 is much better than 40, but uh, we'll make the best of it. And if you can hear this clanging in the background, there's this overhead cover somewhere over there on the far side, and I like peeled off, like it's metal, metal siding or whatever, and it's just like flapping. So try to ignore that if you hear it. Anyway, let's go ahead and run through the stages. I'm gonna run them out of order because that's how I laid them out on the range. But the first one I'm going to go through on the February 2023 NRL 22 Coaster Flyer is a moment like this. 100 second part time, 10 rounds. We have the full KOL rack, quarter, three quarter, or th quarter, half inch, three quarter, and a one inch at 35 yards. And we have a two and a half inch on a double hanger at 98 yards. Uh, restrictions here no dialing. So you can only use your parallax and magnification if you want to adjust those, but you cannot dial your elevation or your windage, apparently. Uh, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. 10 rounds, um, 100 points possible, 10 rounds. And this is the bonus time stage. So you get extra time if you finish with, uh, you get extra points if you finish extra time on the clock. We're gonna start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, magging action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on the bottom of the sawhorse and engage the targets with one shot each from far to near, large to small. The shooter will then transition to the top of the sawhorse and repeat the sequence. So basically, 98 KYL, transition, 98 KYL. Pretty straightforward, although shooting a quarter inch KYL for some people off a sawhorse might be a little difficult. Um, so you have to set up a good position here. And I'll just tell you right now, just kneel, trying to stabilize using your, your knee on your support, your trigger hand or your trigger elbow. That'll be the best bet, but let's go ahead and run through it. See how it goes. It's a good amount of wind out there, but I'm almost uh, eight tenths of a mil, maybe. Missed. I don't think he's hit to move on. Okay, well, dancing.
barely hit that one. Not at a 10, missed one at 98. The wind is really moving right now. At 98 yards, uh, I was holding about uh, 8 tenths of a mil. It swirls there too, so that's why I missed my, my second shot at 98. But uh, let's go through it. It's a hit to move on, so I did mess up this stage. And uh, make sure I won't do that during the real match. But um, So I made my all five hits from the bottom of the saw horse pretty easy. Just shoot a prone position. Then transition to the top of the saw horse. Right-handed shooter, I just used my right knee, just brought my right knee up, held that in. I missed my, my shot at 98, should have shot it again before moving to the KOL, but it is what it is. Um, I missed it, I think it went, I was holding, right, uh, holding left or whatever, and it went, it went straight left, so uh, I guess the wind let off. Anyway, KOL made it at 35 pretty easily from that position, so... Not really much to say here. Just make sure when you're shooting from the top of the sawhorse, you just get a stable position. Try to get as stable as possible. Try to balance the gun on the sawhorse if you can, uh, so you're not putting too much wobble onto the rifle. But pretty straightforward stage. And just make sure it's, you remember, hit to move on. So if you do miss, you gotta re-engage. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to another stage. The next stage of fire we're gonna run through is called Love and Lead is in the Air. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have uh, three banks of targets. We have a two and a half inch on a single hanger at 54. And we have two pairs of targets at 90 yards of one and one and a half inch on double hangers. So we have one and a one and a half inch on double hanger on one side, one and a one and a half inch on a double hanger on the other side, left and right, 90 yards away, but they're gapped 10 yards apart. Uh, no restrictions, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. We're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position, and engage the targets with one shot each as follows. Left, small target, right, small target, then center. So just to keep in mind, the 54 yards is in between or center of those two 90 yards targets. So you're going to do left, small target, right, small target, center, left, large, right, large, and then repeat. So that's five. So left, small, right, small, center, left, large, right, large, then repeat, left, small, right, small, center, left, right. So... Uh, all targets are hit or miss, move on. So you don't have to hit to move on. So just engage and keep moving. Pretty straightforward from the prone position. Not much else to, to say here. Just run through it. And just, you're just going to swing your gun left and right. Uh, let's just run through it real quick. Uh, should be pretty straightforward other than this wind. Bad wind call. Hit. Center. Large. Need to hold about two tenths, three tenths. Barely nicked that one. Oh, now we got to repeat. Small. Hit. Hit. Center. Large. Hit. Hit. Safe. It's actually a little harder than you think. I realized that my target camera that I had was actually not able to catch any of the shots, really, because the targets are so spread out. So um, basically, you're going to have footage of me just shooting prone. But however, uh, as straightforward as the stage sounds, it's easy to mix this up in your head because you're basically swinging 90 left small, 90 right small, center, 90 left large, 90 right large. Then you're supposed to repeat small, small, center, large, large. But in your head, you might actually go to center right after your large target. So you might go left, small, right, small, center, left, large, right, large. Then you might think, oh, I'm going to go center. And that's where it'll probably screw most people up, a lot of people up. Not most people, but a lot of people. Because instinctively, you're just repeating. You're like, your cadence in your head is left, right, center, left, right, center, left, right, center. That's what you're thinking. But you should be left, right, center, left, right, left, right, center, left, right. So make sure you get that cadenced 
um, so you don't mess yourself up because you might drop around. If, you're, if you're, your uh, stage officers or whoever's in your squad is nice enough, they'll probably call it out. Hey, you're going to go left again, right? But usually you'll want to do that for new shooters. Try not to do it for experienced shooters. You should let experienced shooters mess up on their own, right? That's, as long as it's not a safety violation, let them mess up on, the, on re engaging the wrong target because that's kind of on them, right? They should know better. So you should, if on, on those types of things where people call out, hey, what's the next target? Try to not, I try to avoid doing that for experienced shooters. For new shooters, I'll do that, but not for experienced shooters. Next stage we're gonna run through is called Cupid's Arrow. It's a 12 round stage, 120 second part time. We have three banks of targets. We have a two inch at 65 on a single hanger and another two inch at 65 on a single hanger, left and right of each other. Then we have a one and a half inch and a three inch on a double hanger, 85 yards. And when you're looking down range at the targets, the center target or the far target at 85 yards is gonna be in between the two 65 yard targets. Restrictions, no bipods, um, so 120 points possible with 10 points per impact. You're going to start standing rifle in all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position inside the center of the tire as seen here and engage the near targets with one shot each, left and right. So one shot left, one shot right at 65 yards. Then engage the far targets with two shots large, two shots small. So two's large, two small. The shooter will then transition to the top of the tire and then repeat the sequence. A magazine change must be conducted at some point. All targets are hit or miss to move on. So it's just take a shot and then move. Take a shot and move. Just no re-engagement on a miss. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. One shot, one shot, two, two, and then transition, one, one, two, 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 and two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six rounds per iteration. Probably recommend doing a mag change during your uh during your transition. Uh, let's go ahead and run through it, see how it goes. This, that shot, wow, where is that wind going? Missed one shot. Uh, do a mag change. Uh, safe. Find the balance point here. Wow, I think I dropped three. Safe. Uh, this stage is actually gonna be moderately difficult. Uh, the prone position is easy enough. I did drop one round. Even at 65 yards, that wind was throwing me way right. Um, so I had to hold over left quite a bit, um, about a four tenths at 65, which I'm amazed I would need to hold that much. But winds are getting strong out there. And then uh, transitioning, don't forget to do your mag change. Up here, these tires, depending on what your tire setup is, is gonna be wobbly. So in the diagram, they had it tied down to like cinder blocks or something just to keep this thing from falling over. We'll probably end up doing that during the match or for match day, but for me, I didn't, wasn't too concerned about me pushing the tire over, but we'll go ahead and secure that. Um, that won't really help with stability. This still is gonna wobble. So my only uh, recommendation here is try to balance your gun accordingly and then uh, just sort of Guide the gun in there and try not to put too much force in there so you cause this thing to wobble, but that's where you're going to lose some shots. Uh, anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the next one. The next stage we're going to run through is called Love-Hate Relationship. 120 second part-time, 10 rounds. We have two targets, a 2-inch on double at 77 yards and a 2.5-inch on a double at 88 yards. Uh, no restrictions here. 
uh, standard standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on the lowest ladder, ladder rung and engage the targets with one shot each near to far. Repeat this sequence by climbing the ladder. Only climb back down if you cannot re safely reach a higher ladder rung. I'll tell you right now, um, I'm not going to be able to shoot off the top rung because I'm short like that. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and then back down because that's just the way it works for me. All targets are hit or miss, move on. So just if you, you just shoot and, and keep shoot and move, shoot and move. No re-engage if you miss. Uh, nothing special here. I I forgot to bring my my uh, my rail attached bag, so that's why I'm not using it for this stage. But I'll just go ahead and use a Schmedium. I should be able to fit this gun underneath the ladder rungs with that bag, but it might be big for my Voodoo. It was definitely big for my Voodoo, but um, we'll, we'll mess with the Schmedium. It should work, hopefully. Well, let's see how it goes. Safe. Safe. Barely nicked it. Safe. Whoa. I know where that went. Safe. Still going right. Safe. This stage of fire is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you don't spend too much time like in previous months on a ladder where you do a one shot per rung. So you're constantly having to reset and that takes all your time. Here you're taking two shots per rung, so it's pretty simple. Uh, today though, you saw me miss a, couple, a few shots because the wind is just killing me out here. I'm holding left because the, the bullet is going right. However, when I miss, the debris is going left as if it's a right to left wind. So it's very misleading. Like the, all the wind, you know, before the target is left to right, but in the impact area, it's swirling this way. So it's pushing back all the debris that way. So it's very, very sketchy here on this way this range is constructed. So I'm totally missing a bunch of shots. My wind call is just really off and I'm, I'm underestimating wind call. I'm holding just like maybe three tenths when I need to hold like six tenths of wind at at 80, uh, 88 yards, which is it's pretty significant for room fire. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the last stage of fire. This one, again, it's pretty straightforward. Last stage of fire we're gonna run through is called All You Need Is Love and Skill. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We only have one target. It's a four inch on a single hanger at 73 yards. Uh, restrictions, only a sling may be used for the unsupported position. So 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. You'll start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target as follows. Standing, unsupported, two shots. Each tank trap tip with one shot, shooter will then repeat the sequence. So two standing, one, two, three, two standing, one, two, three. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna use a sling. Uh, I don't use sling and standing, that's just the way I work. Because in NRA slash CMP service rifle, a high power service rifle, you don't, use a, you don't use a sling and standing 200 yards. You're just shooting it, you know, just straight up. Granted, we wear shooting coats, but we don't wear, so you want to use slings. And if you can feel that, uh, the wind just picked up a little bit, but um, that's probably the biggest problem in standing is the wind because the wind blows you, your body, not the bullet as much. You're not so concerned about the bullet as you are about your body. But we'll try to make it work today.
went over the top safe. It's pulse. Safe. 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 I, I broke that bat, I knew it. Safe. 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 Disappointing in my standing. My difficulty today hitting this target while standing is not a reflection of how difficult the stage is. It's actually relatively straightforward. You just need to get your get your standing position worked out. Um, I don't shoot standing at all anymore. I used to shoot that religiously. That was the only thing I practiced back in the day, but don't shoot standing anymore. But that being said, uh, you should have plenty of time to get these shots off. Because once you do the tank trap, a four inch tank trap, you're shooting off the tip of a tank trap at 73 yards on a four inch, you can do some pretty sloppy work here. You can just, you can just aim center, Break a shot and go, right? You're not, it's not, you're not framing a shot as much as you would with like a small target. So around the tank trips, you're gonna be really fast. Then use that time in standing to make sure you're set well. Establish your body, NPA, natural point aim, and get it and break a good shot. That's all I can say. I looked at my clock on the first run. I had like 90 something seconds elapsed. So that means I had 30 seconds left to burn in standing. And I should have taken more time to establish a good shot in standing. And I think I would have made my hits there in today's conditions. But anyway, this is uh, not a bad stage. Just make sure you're comfortable shooting standing. Again, it's a pretty big target four inch and there's really no excuses for me to miss that. I mean, it's all on me. Uh, just, be, just not, not, being, not being a good shooter today. So uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping it up so we can get out of here because the wind is really starting to get to me. While I'm packing up my gear, I'm just gonna give a quick uh, summary of the February 2023 NRL 22 course of fire. Uh, my assessment is it's a relatively easy to moderate difficulty course of fire. There's a standing stage which sounds difficult, but it's moderately difficult. It's a large, tar large target, four inch at 73 yards. Not that big a deal. I think the only difficult factor or the difficulty factor is if you have conditions like I'm shooting in today, where we have 15 minimum, uh, 15 mile an hour minimum winds anywhere to 20, 20, maybe a little bit above 20. With me holding, having to hold anywhere from 0.6 to one mil left, depending on how the wind is, a lot of let offs here and gusts. So uh, outside of that external factor is, the course of fire is pretty straightforward and you shouldn't have too much difficulty. Um, but that's pretty much that. Got all the target tree and props back in the condensed container, just need to pack up what you see here, my shooting mat and one of my bags. It's already 10.45, been out here for longer than four hours. And a lot of people don't realize that when I come out to the range to do these match, these NRL 22 match uh, course of fire run throughs, I'm out here for like pretty much a duration of a real match. Cause I have to take out all the stuff from the condensed container, set up all the targets, get everything prepped, get all the barricades prepped, lay it all out, rearrange if I need to. And then when I get down to position to shoot the stage, I come to, you know, I might find a, an issue like, oh, it's can't see the target from this position. We got to move it somewhere else. All these little things. So I'm not here for quite some time when I do these run throughs. Uh, uh, but it is what it is. It's best to do all this stuff ahead of time so I can prep for the match, like the match range logistics prior to match day. So we're not scrambling on match day. Anyway, uh, as far as this gun, my 1022, people are wondering why I don't shoot my Voodoo again. If you haven't seen my previous range logs, I don't have any ammo for my Voodoo that shoots well. I do have a case that I got from the, the Capstone, Rim, La, the Lapua Rimfire Performance Center, which no longer shoots well. It tested fine. In the, it tested great in that gun when I got it. 
then when I, I, I had it sitting around at home for eight months or so, and then I cracked it open to start shooting because I ran on my other ammo. And then after a while, it just wasn't shooting well, and, and now it shoots terribly, so I can't really use that ammo because I don't trust it. It doesn't shoot accurate. And incidentally, I went to SHOT Show. Um, if you haven't seen my SHOT Show recap, I have a, a write-up, four-part write-up on my blog at okfg.net. But you see my SHOT Show beanie here? Uh, I went to SHOT Show, and at the Lapua or the Capstone booth, I spoke with someone at the, uh, who worked at the, uh, works at the Ohio uh, Lapua Rimfire Performance Center, and I told them the scenario. Hey, I went to Mesa, got my gun tested, lot tested, found a lot that was great, bought a case of it. Didn't use that case until eight months later, was shooting, it was okay, then it just went to crap. And I told him that situation. And the guy had some pretty interesting theories. Number one, he's not a fan of testing the gun outside of the chassis. He said it's possible that it just doesn't shoot well in a stock with that gun, with that ammo, the harmonics and whatnot. Uh, for those that don't know, most of the time at the La Pua Test Center, they'll take your barrel to action, put it into a, a block designed for that action, and then they vice that block. So it's in a fixture and it does not move. They can pull the trigger and there's like the recoil, there's no movement whatsoever. It's a great way to test it because you eliminate human factor. And it's all mechanical now. However, he said like the, 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 the harmonics are different than if it were sitting in the stock or chassis you actually use. And they would prefer like, they, they actually recommend people do that if you can, but the difficulty is in that is that there really is no consistent way to get this gun, like if you put it into a, a rest, to make sure it repeats every time, right? So the best you can do is get like a bench rest type thing where they have like a, a single piece bench rest mount and you try, hopefully that the person's stock that, or chassis you're testing will fit in it. Uh, but barring that, the vice block fixture is like the best way to go. But he said that it's possible that, that for some reason the barreled action shot that gun well or that ammo well outside of a stock but not, it won't shoot well in a stock, it's possible. Then he said that it's possible my barrel changed since the time that I bought the ammo or was tested and I actually opened it up and started shooting it. As I mentioned earlier, I, I think I bought, I, October 2021, got the ammo, and then I didn't crack it open until summer, it's like maybe July, August, and then I didn't start using it until like late summer. And in between that time, I probably shot another 2,000 rounds in my gun. He's, pro, he's thinking that it's possible my barrel changed and that ammo is no longer liking my barrel at that point. If that is the case though, he also says that it's possible my barrel will change again maybe another 2,000 rounds later, well, that ammo will decide to start liking my barrel again. Because he said rimfire, you know, rimfire, even though it doesn't really wear out, it does wear in a specific way that for your barrel that it just decides to handle things differently. It fouls differently after maybe three or 4,000 rounds that, you know, certain ammo doesn't shoot well as it did before. And he actually said that he, he, he's heard of people buying like five or six cases. That's like you know, there's 5,000 rounds in a case, people buy five or six cases because, oh, that, that shot well. Come to find out years later after they go through maybe another case or, you know, the second or third case, it doesn't shoot anymore because their barrel has changed. So that was a good, interesting theory. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll deal with it. And uh, I'm gonna try to find some ammo for my Voodoo so I can start shooting it regularly again. Uh, I, I have some ammo that shoots well, but I've only got less than a brick left. So I need to save that for like certain situations where I know, hey, I'm gonna need, I want to use my Voodoo because I want it, you know, the most accurate gun I got. But I'm going to probably risk buying maybe a case of Ely match whenever that comes back in stock again. Blindly, I'll just buy a case or buy a case of 10X um, because 10X isn't that much more than, than Center X if you buy it from a regular retailer. Um, so I don't know. I might just buy a case blind of either center x more of like midas plus i'll buy I'll, I'll have more faith buying that blindly play midas plus or ely match or ely 10x i'll buy that blindly a case uh but we'll see what happens when i can find some of that ammo anyway that's that next match for nrl 22 for us at west end gun club february 26th sunday fourth sunday of february hopefully the range conditions or the road conditions leading to the range are going to be good hopefully we don't get enough rain again that will wreck the road again and we won't have to cancel the February match because we've already canceled two months in a row. Would not want to cancel a third month in a row if at all possible. Anyway, that's it for today, February 1st here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.